question. Uh, I draw the uh, member's attention to Erskine May, 400, page 401. <clears throat> and there's other restrictions on contents of amendments. Various considerations that render amendments out of order have been described earlier. The amendment is out of order if it is inconsistent with the amendment already agreed to, or if it is substantially the same as an amendment of to the same motion which has already been negated. Substantially the same as an amendment to an amendment that has already been negated. And I would have thought that an amendment uh, which was put up, if I can just have the series of amendments here, we, uh, an amendment which says uh, to change uh, uh, 1 July to 1 November, which voted down, then the second amendment to change 1 July to 31 October was substantially the same. We're talking about 24 hours. Uh, uh, and then another amendment to say 30 October is substantially the same. So the, the point that's being made here is that there's got to be, the amendments have got to be substantially different. And in these amendments, in my view, they are not substantially different. If it was going to be a matter which was the legislation turned on dramatically and the legislation had not been before the House before and had not been to a select committee, then the member might have an argument. But the point I would make to the members is that this is a piece of legislation which has been to this House before. It has been canvassed by a select committee and the select committee report came back without any particular uh, sense of outrage about the date. Uh, I think the matter has been well canvassed by the House before and these amendments are not substantially different. I want to say to the members I'm not taking any more points of order on that. I've ruled. I've ruled the points of order out and I'm going to proceed to put the vote. Sir. New point of order. New point of order, sir. We, we, um, well, of course, we, uh, you know, we, we, we disagree, but we accept the ruling you made. Can, can I raise a point of order with you, sir, um, about the about the future practice for how uh, oppositions can have um, some some certainty around their their amendments, and it may require something that, that you want to come back to us, uh, come back to us about. This is a proportional representation parliament, and, and since uh, 1990 or 1998, uh, the, the government has been a minority government, and there, there is shifting coalitions of parties around different pieces of legislation, even within confidence and supply agreements. That's become a feature uh, of, of our system, that, that minority governments can regularly be defeated on a particular piece of legislation in the House. It's not the end of the world because they, they have arrangements for confidence and supply elsewhere. If you rule, sir, that because a majority of the committee uh, voted against, for example, the date 31 October 2025, and because there was not a majority for that, and there are a lot of amendments in there, if it was, if it was the case where a majority of, of Parliament was in favour of, for example, the 30th of April 2025, a six-month difference, which I think would be a substantial enough uh, uh, difference, how, how can the chair or the committee know that? Uh, if so, as soon as the first vote is taken, it is assumed that there's a majority against every single amendment that has been put up by, by a member, because in, a, in, the, in the shifting uh, coalitions that, that take place around pieces of legislation, it may well be that a subsequent amendment, quite, quite further through the, uh, uh, the ones that have been put up, uh, would be able to find the majority uh, of members of parliament agreeing with it down the track. But you can't possibly know that at the point you rule out the first, uh, uh, the first amendment. It seems to me that, that the danger we, we, we could get into in this, I mean, this is an example, it's a broader sort of issue, which is why I'd be, we would be keen for your view, uh, is quite a first-past-the-post model that it assumes that once there's a defeat on the first amendment, that's it, there can be no other chance for Parliament to support another, me another style of the amendment that may, be down the, that may have come down the track. I call the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think um, uh, the shadow leader of the House raises an interesting point uh, in so much as, uh, if I could correct him, we've probably had minority government in this country since about mid-1994. Uh, but that, that, uh, the point is, so your, your question is, well, we have, if you look at your history. Um, order, yeah, order, order, right. order. I'm sorry. Order. No, I want the members to sit down. Mr Hughes has interrupted the point of order. I want you to uh, apologise to the House for the interruption. I've drawn an apology. No, I didn't need to just apologise. The Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, he's a young, young man, probably doesn't remember back that far. Order. But, uh, the, um, order. I've drawn an apology. I, I, look, I promise not to make fun about his size if he doesn't make fun about my age. I can do something about my problem. Order, members, members, members. Can we just say, look, I, I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm getting a little bit uh, frustrated by this 
members are to make points of order which are about the order. I am not interested in debating the pros and cons of MMP, the sweep of history. I am confronted here by a particular point and I am about to have a vote. This is the only remit I have to here at the moment. So this has to be about this. Mr Speaker, I think your decision should stand because the, advance, the argument that uh, Mr Hughes has just advanced is that in the few seconds that might elapse between one vote being put and the other, uh, that the arrangements in the House could be reconfigured uh, such that people might consider one day's movement uh, and the dates uh, proposed to be suddenly acceptable. That's utterly preposterous. Uh, and as he himself says, we have now had a long history of uh, coalition governments, uh, and I don't recall any such uh, change in the mid of a vote. Speak the point of order. Call the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, and Mr Chairman, this is close to but not exactly on the point that my uh, colleague Darren Hughes has, has raised, but I think it's close enough that we don't have to start a new one. Uh, sir, and, and, and that goes to the question of what is substantially the same. And I, um, I'm finding a compelling logic in your uh, suggestion that shifting by a day um, would not make a lot of difference. Uh, the question that I do have though, sir, is whether a month or six months change um, is in fact something which is substantially the same. And, and, I, think, and I think that's what, that's what you're being asked to rule on. I can, I can um, you know, with some reluctance, and I can feel some stares from behind me already, um, accept uh, a ruling which indicated that a day-by-day -day approach um, is... is so, order, order. I just ask the member to constrain himself. I want to hear uh, Mr Mallard make his point of order. The, the, the point that I'm, I'm uh, making, sir, is that um, I can accept, given the you know, compelling logic that we've had from the chair on this, that a day-by-day -day, uh, approach is one uh, where there might, might not be a lot of substance uh, in the difference. The question I have, though, sir, is that if something is a month apart, or even a week apart, actually, but say a month apart, whether in fact that is substantially different and whether the House should be given the opportunity uh, to rule on that. And what I'm, I think, inviting you to do, sir, is to um, amend your ruling to probably rule out the majority of the amendments but to uh, allow the House to vote on a sample of them, uh, say a week or a month apart, uh, in order, uh, with a ruling that that is enough of a difference for the House to be allowed to voice an opinion. Well, can I just say to the Honourable Member, I'm certainly not going to do that. The moment I draw a line and say it's a month or six weeks, I can hear another three hours of debate and, and, and uh, uh, points of order about how I've got the snapshot wrong. Now, I'm not going to take any more about, uh, on this, but I'll make a couple of preliminary comments. Firstly, uh, it would seem to me that uh, substantially uh, would be a judgment that would have to be made at the time by any future chair. And it would be made on the basis of how important the date was about the implications of the legislation. And that would be driven by the debate about the issue during the committee stage or during the discussion of the bill. I've heard no such debate thus far, only at this particular point in time. And so that uh, 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 the, the substantiality argument, on some occasions it might be uh, small numbers, other occasions it might be big numbers, but it would be determined by the debate. And I'm not going to hypothetically project into the future uh, what would be substantiality, but I think any ordinary member of the public would say that amendment to shift uh, from the 30th of November to the 29th of November is not substantial. And I think the ordinary public would say it is a minor technical. Now, I'm entertaining no more uh, uh, points of order on this. We're now going to move to the vote. The question, therefore, order, is... Mr Chairman. This had to be a motion.